Hey there. Thanks so much for taking the time to put your questions up. I'm really happy to help make sense of this for you and help move you along in your journey and help make it go easier for you. So we got one about sleep and it was something along the lines of, hey, I sleep five hours, four hours. I feel fine, but I am struggling with my weight still. Why do I need to bother with all this rigmarole about nighttime rituals and keeping the bedroom dark and all that kind of stuff? Why should I bother? I can, I can sleep fine for when I do and I think that I have no problems from it. Uh, so how could that possibly affect my weight? You know, great question. And I'd love to, to give some good depth and good clarity on this. Our sleep is something that is so critical for repairing and rejuvenating our bodies in many ways. You know, uh, uh, Dan, Dan Amen, a friend, he's a doctor who's done about 80,000 brain scans on people now. So he's looked at three-dimensional views of people's brains and how the blood flows within them, how big they are, and whether or not they're damaged. He's lined up a lot of habits, um, how much you sleep, what medicines you're on, did you used to play pro football, you know, all these types of variables on how your brain looks, just how big it is and how well it's working. And there's something pretty wild that happens whenever you dip below seven hours of sleep. So there's visible damage in certain parts of the brain that have effects on controlling our body composition and controlling our metabolism. So we get actual brain damage, like visible brain damage. And there are many that certainly are familiar with functioning on five hours of sleep, but I would make a big distinction between being used to it and being familiar with it and really thriving. You know, you might hear stories about like um, Isaac Asimov was an author that I just loved growing up, all of his work. And he was someone that could probably sleep 90 minutes a day and spend literally 17 to 20 hours a day on his typewriter. And he loved that and he did reasonably well from it. He's not the norm. <laughs> and how frequent that is, as far as people that can be healthy and do well, on less than about seven hours of sleep, it's slim to none. If you're very convinced you're functioning well on that, give yourself a challenge. You know, shoot for three weeks of moving to seven to eight hours per night. And just watch and see how you're functioning. You know, watch your mood throughout the day. And, you know, sometimes it won't even be you, but it might be other people that seem to change. <laughs> watch how you're feeling and watch how you interact with others and watch your metabolism and your weight. You know, see if there's a positive shift that occurs. You know, sometimes also people can have just cravings for certain foods uh, or it's a hard time to really stop after that first serving. See how that changes by, by getting more sleep. And I would challenge you to test it out yourself. You know, as always, ultimately this is you and your grand experiment in your health. But this is a tool that can make a big difference. We've had, by last count, over 240 studies correlating unexplained body weight and lack of sleep. You know, and I talk in the book about how somewhere around 1990, this rate of obesity just skyrocketed like crazy worldwide. Uh, and a reporter just about a few weeks ago that was interviewing me he had this amazing insight that I did not have when I wrote the book, and I wish I could have added that in. But he shared some statistics with me that shift work, you know, people working throughout the overnight, like, you know, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., or even like 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. or midnight, people working later hours, the rates of that went up by 30, 40% in 1990 and just before then. So this is probably one more big variable that's behind this burgeoning obesity crisis. So sleep is good stuff, your, your brain needs it, and, and really the number of people that can do well in less than seven hours are honestly a few per 10 million. You know, it's very, very rare. So don't assume, test it out, give yourself two, three weeks of seven to eight hours of good sleep, see how you do. If you're like most of us, you're probably gonna feel better, and that's a great thing. However you can get there safely, that's what I want for you. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk more soon. Bye-bye.